Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Is this, is this working? It's, it's showing green. I changed the batteries this morning. Test, test. No. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. God is love. We know this to be true. And the Apostle John, especially in his gospel and in his epistles, tell us of this attribute of God. Part of his very character. God is love and God loves us. You know, we use the, the word love, though, rather flippantly, don't we? And often it would seem for, for something other than a reflection of true love, of, of God's love. Love, and, and much of it's used in our English language, and its very application in our lives is anything but love. You know, I, I love apple pie. I, I, I love a good movie. I love to play sports. I, I love my friends. I love my wife. I love my boys. I love my job. I love my hobbies. I mean, what are the things that we say that we love? I love video games. I love my phone. You know, for, for the most part, though, people could take that word love and, and replace it with the word desire. A desire that, that once gotten, had, and, and held will, will give them or you some measure of gratification or satisfaction. A desire out the pie, not for the pie itself, but for the taste of it, the enjoyment, the, the tantalizing flavors of cinnamon and sugar and apple on my tongue. I desire a woman. I desire to escape to a world of wonder and, and excitement through the words upon a page or the pictures on a screen. I desire to accomplish such and such, or I desire to create something particular. I desire children, a wife, a family. What are all the things that we desire? When you think about all the things that, that you would say that you love in your life. Could you just replace that word with desire or another word? You know, there's nothing innately wrong with, with desiring or longing for, for any of those things. They can all be considered good gifts of God for our enjoyment and even pleasure. Yet, is that what love really is? Or at the very least, desire, if anything, is just a part of it. You know, our society in particular confuses true love and its meaning and its function with a counterfeit and a, and a tainted version that is based upon neediness or self-gratification which in truth, according to Holy Scripture, is no real love at all. It's type, a it's type of expression, no matter the type of expression, for the object. The Holy Scriptures, the Hebrew Old Testament, uses three words for love. And in the Greek, there are actually four words for love. Only three of those are used, actually, in the New Testament, though. But even with these additional <coughs> words used to describe and differentiate the types of love, still Paul had to write a letter to the church in Corinth to explain to them what true love looks like, what godly love looks like, what it is and what it is not. And in the midst of this letter, he says, love is patient and kind, Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. That's, that's a test to 
whenever you think of those things, when you throw out the word, I love whatever, is this the test that would show that that's not true love at all? You know, Non-Christians can display some type of affection or desire or camaraderie towards others, but it's not true love. Only believers in Jesus Christ can display true godly love toward others because God abides in us. The Apostle John explains this in his first epistle. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. <clears throat> Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. By this is love perfected with, with us. So that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Unfortunately, even Christians can and do mess up love. Just like we, we make a mess of everything, everything in our lives from time to time. So often we confuse our, our selfish desires with the love or what we think is love. It becomes somehow tainted. And all of us should really know and understand what love is and holds, hold ourselves and each other's to it. We should know and live this love because it is the love of God in us. The Father has shown us what real love, true love is through His Son, through Jesus Christ our Lord. God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The love of God is a sacrificial love. It is what C.S. Lewis describes as gift love. Greater love hath no one than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. So let's take a little bit closer look to our reading, starting in verse 4. Love is patient. It's long-suffering. Why does God wait to come? Why does God not come now and judge the world in righteousness? And set all things right. You know, it's not that God lets sin slide. Or, but he gives us lots of time and opportunity to repent. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness. But is patient toward you. Not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach <coughs> repentance. Ask yourself, do I exhibit patience towards others, even the ungodly, and that while sinners, they may yet be saved? Love is kind. It is good because God is good. Do I show others divine kindness and gracious restraint? Do my words lift up? Do I offer a helping hand? Love does not envy. You know, the word is in the Greek is most often translated zeal in the po positive sense or, or even passion. But here in the negative, it would be the envy, envy for whatever reason. Love does not contend, it does not compete, it isn't jealous, it doesn't get worked up or emotional with others when, when they do something wrong. Love is unoffendable in a sense. Do I get irked when others are successful or shown appreciation? And on the flip side, love is not 
It does not boast. It doesn't brag. It is not arrogant or pretentious. It does not blabber or chatter. Love is not arrogant. Literally puffed up. To blow up or inflate. This is not swollen with pride. Love is not proud at all. On the contrary, it's humble. Love is not rude. We all know what rude is, but there's also a deeper meaning here. Love does not scheme or act in an underhanded way. Love does not take advantage or, or force itself upon another person. We see that clearly in how God loves the world. He wants people to repent, to return. And he has shown that love through Jesus. The Father's love for the Son and the Son's love and obedience to the Father through his death and resurrection. God does not force that love upon anyone. It is a love freely received or rejected. Love does not insist on its own way. Or love does not seek after herself. Love, or the heart's desire, is for the other. It's not selfish. How many marriages fail from not understanding this? Most people view love as, as contingent upon being pleased rather than being pleasing. I will love you as long as you meet my expectations and my desires. That's not godly love at all. Love is not irritable. Uh, love does not stir the pot. It doesn't provoke someone to anger. Love doesn't purposely push people's buttons. And, and love doesn't let itself be provoked when their buttons are pushed. How many times have people had relationships over such aggravation? It's not godly love. Love is not resentful. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. I'm sure you've all been in a fight or an argument when someone brings up all your past mistakes. God's love forgives and it also forgets. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing. You know, and I like the older reading from the King James. It rejoiceth not in iniquity. <laughs> love does not jump up and down, sing songs, or go on parade celebrating the transgression of God's divine law. God is love. And true love never contradicts who God is. He is love, but he is also holy and just and righteous and pure and awesome and glorious. He is light. There is no darkness or shadow or shade. God is love, but love is not God. That's a satanic lie that has deceived the world, that love is love no matter its perverse nature. Anything called love that contradicts God's law and his gospel is no love at all. Love does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices with the truth. Literally, love has and joy come together in truth. This is the fruit of the Spirit. This love, this rejoicing only comes from God. In Christ, the truth is revealed. Love is revealed. God's Word and His commands are revealed by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is a love his word, for it reveals truth. This love and joy is com in complete contrast to the world's perversion of love. It is a divine gift because it relishes and rejoices in what is right. The world cannot know this love because apart from Christ, it cannot be received, realized, understood, or lived. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love bears, it covers, it conceals, it holds back, and, and it supports all things. Love believes. It trusts and it obeys. It's confident 
in God in all things. Love hopes. It is assured that God will fulfill his word and his promises in all things. Love endures. It holds fast. It stands firm all the way to the end, no matter the trial or no matter the hardship. Love never fails. It never fails. It never ends. There will come a day when our, when our faith will be made sight, our hope in God's promises fulfilled. But true love, the love of God which he has poured into our hearts, will never end. It will find its fullness and perfection in the presence of our Savior, of our God, when we see him face to face. We live in a world and a society that, that doesn't know what true love looks like what godly love is, because they do not know Jesus. You know, it's up to us as people of hope to show them. We show them how we love and care for one another inside the church, and we show them outside through our acts of kindness and by sharing the true gospel in all its fullness. May God, may the Holy Spirit strengthen us for this task. It's most holy name.